Welcome to Gravity. Uh, so we're going to talk about gravitation and gravitational field strength. And I love this hover orcas. I don't think you understand the gravity of the situation. Uh, uh, so we're going to talk about Newton's universal law of gravitation. It's assumed to apply everywhere in the universe. Turns out with dark energy stuff, we know that actually it's a little bit uh, different. So we have now put it like an asterisk saying, uh, always the case except on very large scales in the universe because something seems to be acting opposite to this. But for right now, let's just talk about this. So it's un universal law of gravitation. It's assumed that there's a force of attraction between two masses at a distance r apart. What that means is no matter what the mass of one object and another object, those two masses are attracted to each other gravitationally. And it's based on the actual value of the masses, also the distance, so that'll affect it. And it turns out every object with mass in the universe attracts every other object with mass in the universe. So you're attracted to like a galaxy far away, uh, you're attracted to it technically. It's just that, yes, it's got a huge mass, but it's got a very long distance. So that's just why uh, you will see how this works here. It's We can quantify it. This is what Newton figured out, a very, very clever man. Uh, look at this, F equals G M M over R squared. This is the equation we can use here. So this is the force of attraction. So this one right here, um, and we assume that gravity always attracts. So again, it depends on the different units here. So force of attraction, what do you think the force is measured in? I hope you know, it's Newton's. G is just a constant, you can look it up. It's uh, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. Uh, mass is measured in kilograms. R is a distance between the center of both, both masses. So it's the center of gravity. Um, and a distance would be measured in meters. So this is it, that's how we use it. So G, you can look it up and then you just multiply the masses. So you can see that the gravitational force between two objects depends on the masses themselves. So it depends directly on the masses. Uh, this is proportional, I mean, but it depends inversely proportional to the square of the distance. So it tells you that, you know, if you're, Distance increased by two, for example, two squared is four. That means the force would go down by four. It's one of those inverse square law, we call it. Now we have something more interesting called the gravitational field strength. I like this, it's a gravitational force per unit mass experienced by a point mass. What do we mean by that? There's a nice easy equation for it as well. It goes like this, G equals F over M. This is the equation you get in your uh, data booklet here. And the reason I think it's so amazing is that, well, let's first of all look at this thing right here. This is this thing called the gravitational field strength. We have to be a little bit careful here. So let's look at this and put in units. Uh, gravitational field strength, well, let's see. It's based on a force, force is measured in newtons, and a mass, which is measured in kilograms. So if you ever don't know the units for this right here, think carefully, it's gravitational field strength. Let's see, it should be newtons per kilogram. So that will be the unit for it. Um, you can also use, because we can also use this equation we just had before, you can say then, yeah, I'll put it down like this, I'll put a different color. So then G equals, let's see, F was G M M over R squared. We divide that whole thing by M. That means we can divide by one, which is the same thing as saying G equals uh, G M M over R squared times one over m, therefore the m's cancel out. And that's why you end up with g equals g m over r squared. You see, this is the other equation we get. That's this one right here. So that's the important thing here. I will just uh, put it in green maybe. So we can see it's really, really important. And good news, you don't have to memorize this. They give you this too. So what this tells you is you can find out the gravitational field strength around any object of mass m as long as you know its uh, distance or its radius r. Now the really interesting thing is this. G, do you notice it looks tantalizingly similar to the number we know on Earth, right? 9.81 meters per second squared. And it turns out that is the case. This G, this gravitational field strength, is the acceleration due to gravity on that planet, which is amazing. That means you can find the acceleration due to gravity on any mass m uh, given a radius r. So as long as you know the mass m and the radius, you can find the acceleration due to gravity around any planet. So that means if you put an m for Earth and you put an r for Earth, you'll get something close to 9.81. I mean, this is theoretical. There's some actualities that are a little bit different. But isn't this pretty amazing? 
So this is how you can actually do it. And if you're not sure, you can look at the units really carefully. Remember what a force is? A force is, let's just look at the units of this thing right here. Um, if you look at this right here, the units of G. Well, it's got units of force, and a force is a Newton, isn't it? Newton uh, per kilogram, let's just say. But don't forget a Newton. A Newton is um, F equals MA, isn't it? And if you remember F equals MA, uh, that means we have a mass, which is also in kilograms, times uh, acceleration, which is uh, meters per second squared. And look carefully, then you've got these kind of units, right? Don't forget you had to divide by kilogram there as well. You still had, that's Newton's is kilogram meter per second squared. But we also had a kilogram hanging out there. That was from the definition, it had to be divided by mass. So we take our kilogram meter per second squared, that's a Newton, divide that by a kilogram, and what do we get? Kilograms cancel out. We have units of meters per second squared. Do you see it's units of acceleration? This is why it's awesome. Okay, so you can use this to calculate either the gravitational field strength if you ask for that, or if they ask you what's the acceleration due to gravity, same, same. Let's look at some examples here. So we've got this one. I love this gravity, just a theory like this. So we've got, what's the acceleration of free fall? Ooh, what does that mean? For a planet that has 10 times the Earth's mass and a radius 20 times that of Earth. So if you want the acceleration due to free fall, isn't that G? Now you might think, well, isn't it 9.81 question mark? Uh, no, not on Earth. Uh, I mean, sorry, yes on Earth, not on this planet. So it's not that. So we use this other formulation for G. We say G is, again, F over M, which is G M over R squared. We can use that. We can start off with that directly. Now here's the interesting part. Then let's look at this thing for this planet here. So it's G times, and instead of mass, let's put a little subscript E, you know, for mass of the Earth. You know, we'll use those things when we need them. So, for example, it has 10 times the mass of the Earth. So, do you see I'm going to put 10 Me, like, so it's going to be G times 10 times the mass of the Earth. Divide that by the radius. So, I'll say 20 radius of the Earth squared. Do you see I've done G M over R squared? I've just had to put in the numbers that I know. I know 10 and 20. Look very, very careful at this. You can actually take this number out. You can say this is G times 10. Actually, maybe I'll uh, put the 10 in front. So it's 10 GME. Do you see I've just put the 10 in front here? Now I have to think about what's 20 squared. Don't forget the 20 here also gets squared. So 20 squared, um, and that is all over RE squared here, like this. So we can look at this, and what's 20 squared? Well, it's 2 times 2, because uh, you have to do 20 times 20, right? So which is 2 times 2, which is 4, and then you put two zeros at the end of it. So it'll be like this. So if you look at this then, that means, let's see, I can do 10 over 400. I can knock out a zero from both of them. So now I have one over 40, G M E over R E squared. And you might be thinking like, hey, I'm missing the information that I need, right? I'm missing what I need. But it turns out, no, you didn't have to be told Earth's mass and Earth's radius. Look carefully at this, look. Do you see this G M over R squared? Isn't that G for Earth? Isn't that just gm over r squared for Earth? And we know that number is 9.81. So this is the key part. That means then you can say the gravitational field strength, in other words, the acceleration of free fall on that planet then is going to be 9.81 divided by 40. You see that? Because this whole, this is 1 over 40 times that number. In other words, it's 1 40th the gravitational, uh, or the acceleration on Earth. So let's just see what that is. That ends up being 0 0.24. Uh, let's see, that's good enough. Um, actually, technically, I should round it to 5. So 0 0.25 meters per second squared. So that's really, really small acceleration. Right? There you go. So that's how I can deal with that one. Let's maybe do another example quickly. Uh, we have a center of two planets. They're separated by distance r. So we have a planet and a planet and a distance r here between them. The gravitational force between the two planets is F. Oh, great. So I have F equals G M M over R squared. What will be the force between the two planets if their separation increases to 4R? So what I want to show you is, again, I always do these ratio questions like this. I first find an equation for F in general, and then I'll call it F2. That's like my second force. Uh, it's going to be the same thing, G M M, except I make my distance 4R squared. 
And if you want to do it then technically, then you should technically do F2 over F. If you really want to be careful with these ratios, um, then you can say fine, it's GMM over 4R squared, which by the way, 4 squared is 16, so 16R squared. All that divided by this F, which is GMM over R squared. I should use capitals everywhere. What happens when I divide a fraction by a fraction? I multiply by the reciprocal. So, whoops. So I'm going to say then it's just GMM over 16R squared times R squared over GMM. Look carefully what happens then. The Lots of the things cancel out. The GMMs cancel out. The R's cancel out. And I end up with F2 is equal to, let's see, I can put the F over here, so I can say F over 16. This is going to be my final answer. Now I've done it formally to show you all the painful details. This is how you can deal with any ratio question. And I say ratio because, you know, whenever you see something changing by something, you can always do it in this way. However, if you get a little bit faster at it, you can just say, ah, the separation increases to 4R, and look carefully, the only thing that changed was the R's. So then you can say that the proportionality constant is just 1 over r squared. You can basically, you know that the GMs are going to all cancel out. So that means then, let's see here, you've got uh, this 4r, so that's why you could just say fine, and also the r's will cancel out too. If you'll end up with proportionality then, it'll just be 1 over 4 squared, which is 1 over 16. So can you see that's how you can kind of know that it'll be, you know, you can say f2 will be equal to f over 16. This is another way to get it faster. If you're not sure though, just do it slowly, slowly, you'll get it to work. This is how we can deal with these kind of questions with gravitational field strength.